Hi everyone, my name is Dion Fuamaku. I am a case worker here at DASA in the methamphetamine outreach team. I've been here for a year now. And my background is six years helping people come out of prison. That's for Mission Australia. That's here in Alice Springs as well. Um, I've been here, I've lived in Central Australia for a long time. I'm not from here though, uh, I'm Samoan, so I'm a Polynesian. I've lived in Melbourne and Sydney growing up here in Australia, but born in New Zealand. Uh, I guess I'll probably start with talking about what we do here. So me and Danny Lloyd, um, it's a two-man team, but we also work collaboratively with, with the other services that are under the same umbrella with DASA. Um, and also other services around. I don't think you can get, um, you can be successful without collaboration. It's a big thing of mine personally with, um, with service delivery of any type. Um, the drug ice or methamphetamine is pretty much everywhere now here in Alice Springs. I know that it's everywhere in Australia as well. I've never actually experienced the drug myself, although I have experienced addiction before um, in, in, in a few different forms. Um, Do you want to explain a bit about your history with drug use personally? Yeah, I can. I don't, I don't mind sharing. Um, I think, well, growing up in a pretty much a broken home with a lot of domestic violence. We, we did have drugs around, mainly back then it was just alcohol and, and ganja cannabis. So experimenting with that, whether it was with my brother or my cousins or my friends at school, there was a, there was a lot of it around. So uh, yeah, so it's just starting there and as we're getting older, we're starting different things. So MDMA and speed was around a lot back then and um, pretty much anything that was around, you know, sniffing as well, was, was a big one, chroming. You know, for those of us on the lower economic scale, that, that was something that we did a lot of. Yeah. So, and, and you've been a case manager with the methamphetamine outreach program for, was it since the start of last year, I believe? Since March last March, year. March, March, and What's your take on the program in terms of um, how it serves the clients, you know, its, it's benefits? and Well, even though I've only been in the program for one year, when I was working at Mission Australia, ever since the program actually kicked off with Danny and Ty, I had always worked collaboratively with them a lot, which is, um, so I kind of felt like a, an extra arm of the team. Um, I've always had a lot of respect for Danny and his, his passion to help people make change and the different ways that he does that is, is phenomenal to me. So when I got the call up or the offer to, to come and join the team, it was a, it was a no brainer for me like to be, to work um, with someone like Danny. I, I knew he had a solid team around him as well. I heard so much about Carol and I had met her before. Carol was the CEO here. Got so much respect for her. The Aboriginal AOD support team as well. Jocelyn, I've known a lot about her um, a lot throughout the years as well. So, yeah, the, I guess when we go back to the question of how the, the program works, I think it's looking outside the box is the reason why we get a lot of really good outcomes and make a lot of breakthroughs with people. And when I say look outside the box, I, I'd say like, you know, not just, not just helping one person, uh, recognizing that they, they come with a package, especially our indigenous Australians as well. Australians, I mean, our indigenous Australians are, are very, they've got a lot of extended family. So understanding that, being culturally aware and being open 
being open to share and sometimes it means outside of work hours which is another blessing working here at DASA is our CEO is very supportive um, and gives us the autonomy to look outside the box you know provided we let her know as well for safety reasons and things like that but um, I think that's just would be one little snippet of of how the program works I, I think to give an example would be good um, sharing life experiences as well uh, walking beside someone and pretty much unconventionally giving some giving somebody a stern word of honesty you know which I think is is lacking a lot of when you look at other services or you know other service delivery types um, that's another reason why it was quick for me to, to come here because I knew the autonomy and the and the, um, I guess the respect for for us as workers to be able to pick and choose how we would engage somebody. You know, everyone's different. We're all very unique people. So, so which is why I go back to Carol as the CEO, giving us the autonomy to, you know, to to broaden our way of thinking, and to use it when we learn something new. So um, I think that's another part, but there's so many more I could probably go on forever. Um, and um, just quickly, why do you think we need this, pro uh, or you need your program to grow first off, and how do you think it could benefit having this program replicated and implemented in other places? I think it's simple, like uh, the numbers here are very high, like the wait list is huge, so if you just think in a simple sense, there's so many people in Central Australia that are struggling with ice, methamphetamine addiction, and those of us that work in the space and uh, have the knowledge understand that, you know, addiction comes with so many layers, you know. Danny says it all the time, and so do you, Jordan, like nobody wakes up and, and decides to be an addict so there's so there's so many people with trauma here and everywhere you know throughout Australia so the numbers and the need is very high the the outcomes that are happening with only two people there's only so much we can do like uh, you know probably Danny is a good in, a good uh, what do you call it example like even though he goes on leave, he's so passionate about it and he knows that he feels bad that he's left me by myself, so he'll check in, you know, and, and do he'll do anything. So but that's the passion that, that we have in this team about it. But that also reflects the need for for more resources, more staff, you know, and just more programs around support for those who are addicted. Not just on meth but, you know whether it's alcohol or, or cannabis or anything. So I hope that, does that answer the question? Yeah, yep, I, I think that sums it up. Yeah, cool. Okay. I think one thing that we know and have known for a while, and even in my time at Mission Australia working in the post release support service, it was always reflected in our reports that the dynamics or the demographic demographic of the prison was changing because we knew those of us who were working on the ground that there was meth or ice was was starting to filter its way in into the town and then we see the the different results in in different areas and and the prison is a good place to see you know? um, I guess my point with bringing that up is we knew years ago that it would be a matter of time before the gear or meth got out to communities. We know that it's happening now. We, we hear it from people who live there, from indigenous people themselves who share with us, yeah, and they'll tell us. You know, they're like, yeah, it's out there. You know, it's there. Um, Danny's done a lot of presentations um, sharing sharing what we do, but also also a warning, you know, to 
to elders out there in communities, letting them know that, you know, this is what it looks like. This is the behaviours that come with it. You know, these are the effects, you know, from financial to mental, you know, and ultimately cultural and in the community itself and how that can filter down. So, and, and he's had a lot of engagement with, with elders as well around that who are just like, you know, like a, a light bulb will go off when they hear him present, presenting. Yeah, the light bulb will go off and they'll be thinking, oh, that kind of explains some of the stuff that's been happening recently or in the last year in community. So, you know, that's that's just another small, a small thing. That's not even in, yeah, it's not even in the, in the our remit to do those things, but we will do it. We'll go out to schools and share, do prevention, tell kids what, what ice looks like, what the ingredients are, you know, um, and be real about it. And we've got clients as well that are happy to share, are passionate, have recovered. Yeah, so I guess that's, that's, that's it for that. Do you have a message for anyone that may view this or listen to this that you would like to share, whether it be from people who work in a similar field or people who are currently going through this addiction? Let's say for those who are working in the field, um, and this is only my opinion only, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a policy or anything. So, is I believe when you work in this field, where people think, you know, when people look to you to help them change, right? it has to be in the heart. It has to be a passionate thing, and also an educated thing as well. You know, it's not. You know, it does take time to learn, but keep. If you're passionate about it, then stick in there. Um, use all the supports you have to debrief. You know, debriefing is so important. You know, after having a long day and of helping numerous clients, you know, whether that's with your boss or with your mates, you know, and, and anyone, they say self-care is important. Um, for those who, are, who might be watching who are struggling with addiction, I would say don't give up, you know, and easier said than done, but look at the positives in your life. Um, I know that's a big thing that we do. Um, we suggest to, to a lot of people is to always see the positives, you know. There's nothing wrong with being grateful for the air that you breathe, you know. Um, being able to walk and, you know, acknowledge those things and, and look within yourself and seek support. Don't be shy. Um, I know that a lot of people out there who are struggling with addiction struggle with stigma and judgment from those around them whether it's in their family or the community, I'd say just persevere and push push on. You know, um, people will think what they think, but you can only take care of what you can control and that's you, you know, and how you approach things. So don't be shy. Um, yeah, seek help from services that are around you and, and, and persevere. And stay away from those you know, who are only going to bring you down because I know they're around. You know, they're probably checking in and ringing you and texting you, change your number. You know, just, um, you can do it.